Hello, this is David Abonic Turtle. I thought I'd look at cash and carry and reverse cash and carry arbitrage. These are the no arbitrage ideas that tell us the forward price ought to find an equilibrium. I'm going to combine some of the building blocks that I've already reviewed in previous tutorials that relate to the commodity futures curve. So you may need to review some of those if you're unclear on some of the building blocks that I will assume here as I work through this example quickly. And first, this is just in regard to a hypothetical consumption commodity as opposed to an investment commodity. So by consumption commodity, think, for example, wheat or corn. I'm going to assume the spot price is $10, denoted S sub zero, the zero for today's price, a risk-free rate of 3%. And I'm going to assume we're talking about a f one year forward. Oftentimes it's less than that, but I want to keep the example simple here. So it's a one year futures or forward price. Then a commodity beta, that's a measure of the commodity's systematic risk of one and a market premium or market risk premium of 4%. I need two more assumptions here about the consumption commodity. First, the storage cost denoted by small u. And this storage cost assumption, here's what di distinguishes the consumption commodity from the investment commodity. So we're going to assume our commodity has a storage cost of 1%. That's in constant proportion to the spot price. And then finally, a convenience yield denoted by small y of 2%. The convenience yield is the benefit of ownership. It's the intangible analog to a dividend or an income. So economically, the convenience yield acts like a lease rate or a dividend, but really it's the intangible analog to the dividend. So I'm assume here there's benefit to holding the commodity convenience of 2%, again, as a constant proportion to the spot price. These assumptions allow me to compute two things, the commodity discount rate of K, which simply applies the capital asset pricing model, risk-free rate, time plus beta times the premium, gives me a commodity discount rate of 7%, and then an expected growth rate of 6%, and that is simply here, the discount rate minus the lease rate, plus the storage cost. After all, we don't expect the lease and the storage, which are ongoing, respectively benefits and costs, to be incorporated in the capital appreciation of the spot price. So this G is the growth rate, what I expect in the spot price as we go forward in time. So with those assumptions, I can now compute two other variables here which can, are easy to confuse. First, the expected future spot price. And notice the notation here. It's expected spot price, ST, meaning in the future. This is something we cannot observe today. We don't know what the price of this consumption commodity will be at the end of the year. But we think, uh, with this information in the simple model, we expect the spot price to be $10.00 growing at the growth rate of 6%. That's all I've done here. You can see that's pretty straightforward. We grow the spot price continuously over one year at the 6% growth rate. So there's our expected future spot price, but we do not observe it today, as opposed to the forward price. And again, notice the notation F sub zero, meaning that is a price we observe today. That's the price that we expect if there's a promise to buy or sell the commodity at the end of the year. So it's not going to be the same thing. And we're going to use the cost of carry model here. It tells us that the expected or implied forward price ought to be the spot price times E, or the continuously compounded here, the risk-free rate, the storage plus the storage cost minus the convenience yield and T for time, one year in this case. So you can see here, that's all I've done is applied this, risk-free rate minus the lease plus the storage cost. Cost of carry model tells us that the implied or expected forward price that we observe today as a promise to buy or sell that commodity should be $10.20. And you'll notice it is lower than the expected future spot price. That's actually what we 
expect to occur under the theory of normal backwardation. After all, this is normal backwardation when the forward price is less than the expected future spot price. And that's because this commodity has systematic risk. I think the easiest way to think about that is to imagine you are going to go along the forward. If you're going to bear the systematic risk, you want to be compensated for that. Your compensation is right here in the difference that profit you would expect to make in the future of 42 cents. Now, if the commodity did not have any systematic risk, then under that special case, they would converge. But here, you as a long forward do expect compensation to bear that risk. So my implied forward is $10.20. And now we look at the arbitrage. First, what if the f observable forward price is $10.20? So in other words, this is the input in the spreadsheet where we put in what the uh, what we see the forward price to trade at, or the futures price rather, $10.20. So it's where it should be, and then both of my arbitrages are not profitable under that scenario. So that's the equilibrium. And really the point here is to look at what if the forward is tr or futures price is trading rich. So now the futures price is $11, but the cost of carry model tells us it should be $10.20. So this implies that we should be able to conduct a cash and carry arbitrage. I'm going to move my diagram over here to make this a little simpler. And so here's our cash and carry arbitrage. If the forward is trading rich relative to the cost of carry, then that implies a cash and carry arbitrage. And here I've detailed this out. You can get the spreadsheet on the website. I'm not going to do all the little nuances here, but this implies first we have two assets, so to speak. So think about this. The forward is the rich thing and the spot commodity is the cheap thing. So we sell the expensive thing and we buy the cheap thing under this cash and carry. So here's our short forward, which invi involves no cash flows today. We buy the commodity. Where do we get the cash? We borrow it. So this cash and carry is borrowing at the risk-free rate so we can buy this commodity, which is the cheap thing relative to the forward, which we short or sell. So that in the future, that cash and carry arbitrage under these assumptions will produce a profit for us. Now, what if the forward price is $10, which is less than what the cost of, cost of, cost of carry model tells us? Well, then... That implies we ought to be able to make money with the reverse cash and carry. So again, here, we want to buy the cheap thing and sell the expensive thing. This time, the forward is the cheap thing, and the spot commodity in relative terms is the expensive thing. So we buy, we buy the forward by going long. Again, no initial cash outlay. And we short the commodity, which gives us cash today. And so with that cash, we lend. So in this case, we lend cash that we get instead of above here borrowing to buy the commodity. And so under the reverse cash and carry arbitrage here as before, zero cash today. And this will give us, in theory, a net profit in the future. And the dynamic no arbitrage idea is that if speculators get into the market exploiting this, then they ought to drive this forward price to, to its equilibrium where it's expected to be, where neither of those trades are profitable. You can get the spreadsheet on the website. This is David Harper, the Bonic Turtle. Thanks for your time.